Okay, today I'm going to talk about how Android does not equal Google. Okay? A lot of people think you have an Android device. Oh, you must love Google. Oh, Google's tracking you. Google's watching everything you do. Google's watching everything everybody's doing. <laughs> Thing is, Android does not equal Google. Yes, Google supplies a lot of source code and they do a lot. They're heavily involved in Android, but Android is an open source software. You can get versions of Android that don't have any Google services. You can make your own version of Android for your device that doesn't have any Google services. Even though Google is one of the biggest developers for Android, Microsoft is one of the biggest developers for Linux. It doesn't matter. The source code is open. You can see what's going on. It's not a proprietary software where it's closed and you don't know what's going on. Okay? So, you can also get devices that are very locked down. For example, Amazon Fire tablets are very locked down. They, they, they try to restrict you from doing anything. That's not an Android thing. That's them taking Android, taking a device, and locking it down. A lot of companies, though, allow you to unlock the bootloader. And if you can unlock the bootloader, you can do anything to that device you want. You can uninstall whatever you want. You can install whatever you want. You can modify whatever you want. For example, I buy Motorola phones because they tend to be low cost, and the company lets you unlock the bootloader. I don't have to do some sneaky hack to do it. I just go to their website when I get a new Motorola device, say, I want to unlock this. They give me a code to unlock it, right? It's not a hack. It's just they let you do it. Funny enough, Google has their own phones. Their Pixel phones, they tend to be the easiest to unlock and the easiest to de-Googlefy. Uh, and you can, again, take those, install a custom ROM. It's not that hard to do. And you can choose not to put any Google services on there. And you can choose to only use open source applications on that device. And again, even when devices are locked down, the Amazon Fire tablets are getting really bad. But for example, Samsung. Samsung tends to be a little more locked down. Luckily, there's a big community out there around it that have come up with hacky ways because last I checked, Samsung doesn't let you unlock the bootloaders. I have an old Samsung tablet I still use for reading at night from 2014, I think. And I was able to unlock the bootloader using community projects unlock it and putting a custom ROM on there and that's great. I don't buy Samsung devices anymore because hey if the company is going to make it hard for me to unlock the device and make me do hacky things that concern me then then why am I going to buy that device? But I know a lot of people who are very very concerned sometimes rightfully so in some ways that these companies are tracking them the government's tracking them. The company's giving all the information to the government. The government's getting all the information from the companies. And, and yes, that sort of thing does go on. And I'm not going to talk too much about uh, you know, how much that goes on. It goes on a lot. We all know that. But here's the thing. You can avoid almost all of that if you take the time to use free and open source software that you vetted. And again, even locked down Android devices, usually you can, if, even if you can't uninstall them, you can disable most applications. It's not the best case scenario, but if you're going to lock the bootloader, you can install a custom ROM and you can use free software on there and you know it's not doing anything. I can show it's like there's no no question about it. Here's the source code. If you think something's going on, you show me where in the source code that it's doing it. Unlike proprietary software and other operating systems for mobile devices that don't give you any options. And that's kind of what this video is about. It's not just Google, Android isn't Google, or it's, it's about people I know who are very, very concerned that they're being tracked, but still use iOS and iPhones. Or maybe they're using Google, but they are, uh, uh, see, I said <laughs> Android, but they haven't de Googlefied it, right? So, and it's just, I just find it funny that iPhone users tend to think that they're being tracked less than Android users. And I just find that funny because I'm not defending Google in any way. I'm saying both these companies are tracking you and other companies that have you have proprietary software on your phone for. And what it comes down to is, think about it, okay? An Android device, even one that I can unlock the bootloader. I can usually change the launcher. I can disable the default web browser. I can use whatever web browser I want. I can use whatever texting application I want. I can go get a free open source one, install it. I can change my keyboard. Uh, did I already say home screen? You change your home screen. Uh, I can choose not to have Google Assistant on there. iOS, and correct me if I'm wrong on, on any of what I'm about to say about it because I don't keep up to it. 
You can't uninstall Safari. You can use other web browsers, but you can't uninstall it. You can't change your home screen. You can't change your launcher. You can't change your keyboard. Okay, you can't get rid of Siri, right? So think about it. You can't get, I'm pretty sure you have to use iMessenger, right? So think about this. You're saying, oh, Google's tracking everyone who's using Android, which isn't true because I can use free and open source software that I can look at the source code I, and I know that they're not doing it. Yes, most people who use Android just leave the default stuff on there and they're being tracked by them and other whatever companies make the phones. But iOS, you can't, again, I'm pretty sure you can't change your text messaging application, which means they're tracking everything that you're texting. And not only that, but they try to force you to use, you're thinking you're texting somebody, but you're actually chatting through their servers if you're talking to other iPhone users, which means not only could they be logging stuff either way, but now you're just sending everything to their servers. Uh, again, if you want to put a shortcut on your home screen to a website, last I checked, iOS, you can install Chrome, you can install Firefox, but you can't add shortcuts to your home screen for them you have to use Safari to do that. Again, forcing them you to use their browser that you can't remove, and it's gonna track everything that you're going through. You, you're telling me that they're saying you have to use this, but there's not a reason behind it. And even if all that, even if you were able to change all that, I'm pretty sure you have to use their keyboard, which means every single thing you type is being put into a proprietary program that they wrote, right? And it could be logging everything and sending everything directly to them. Now, you could say, Chris, prove that it's doing it. Some of that stuff you can prove. Some of it, I don't know, I, I don't have an iPhone to test, but I mean, it's proprietary, so it could be logging everything you're typing, encrypting it and sending it, and it's sending stuff to the, the Apple cloud all the time, so you don't know what it's sending. So, and that's just it, you don't know. But I can prove to you that my keyboard's not logging stuff because I can show you the source code and if you think it is, you show me where in the source code it's doing it. So again, I'm, I'm not defending Google in any way because as far as I'm concerned, they're both just as bad other than Google with their devices do give you the freedom to choose not to use their services where iOS, there is no way around it. You have to be using it and I was told by someone once uh, that Apple users truly believe this, that they pay so much for their phones because they pay ridiculous amounts for their phone. How much is an iPhone now? Uh, nine to $912,000 uh, uh, per phone? That, that's crazy. 12, not 12,000, 1,200. 900 to 1,200, 12,000 would be super crazy. But I've been told that iPhone users believe that they pay so much that Apple doesn't need to track them because they already got money from them so they don't have to collect their information and send it. What a lovely thought. You're an idiot if you believe that. So again, I am not in any way defending Google. I'm just saying, don't think Apple and iOS, I, I don't get um, company loyalty, customer loyalty to a co company. There is Unless it's a little mom and pop company that you interact with, the owners and the employees, they might care about you. These big companies, they don't care about you at all. And if you're putting stickers on the back of your, like I would never put a Google sticker on the back of my car, but people have all the apples, sometimes they have a family apple. It's like, why do you love this company so much? Now, they don't care about you. And I can understand liking a product, but people, iPhone users are just crazy. They, they, see, they look at Android users and they're like, oh, Android users, they, all, they always did just talk about, it. no, it's just, I don't give, I don't care about Google. I use Android because it's technically a better application. There's, there's, there's nothing that Android, and I, that's, this should be a whole video. iOS has built in limitations to it, saying you can't do this. And simple, simple things. Android, there are no limitations. The software doesn't prevent you from doing anything. Some companies, again, lock down their devices, but even most Android devices that are somewhat locked down, you have pretty much freedom to do whatever. Uh, iOS, and correct me if I'm wrong, because last I checked, you can't download videos. Right? You can stream them. So if I give you a direct link to an MP4 or whatever video file on a website, you should be able to download that. Last I checked, you can't with iOS. Same with MP3s. They, they, they decide what you can and can't download. Okay, uh, 
Can you torrent stuff? And don't don't think torrenting is something illegal. Torrenting is a legit thing that can be used for illegal stuff. Most Linux distributions will have torrent things because it's less stress on their servers. Uh, but I don't think you can. I, I think you can now maybe run ROMs like Nintendo ROMs and stuff on iOS. I know you used to not be able to. I think maybe you can now. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you can or can't. Uh, that's always been a thing because because there's nothing to stop you. Also, here's another thing to think about when it comes to iOS versus Android. You don't have to use the Google Store. I can install stuff from my computer. I can download a file on my computer and install it to my phone or from any website. And someone's going to go, oh, you can't just download anything from any website. Well, no, I only do it from websites I know and trust. You think that every application in the, in the, in the Play Store or the, the App Store on iOS is, is secure? Apple is not making all those. There's no way for them to vet them because it's proprietary closed source software. They don't know what those applications are actually doing. So until they find that someone's doing something, they can't pull it. it it's no different pulling down from an, a store than it is a website as long as you trust where it, you know who it's coming from. It's no different than going to different websites. You just have to make sure you trust that website and your connection to that website and who runs that website and who makes the application. It's the same with the with the App Store. I'm almost out of time because my phone's going to or my phone, my camera is going to stop recording at about 12 minutes. But iOS has so many limitations, and all their applications are proprietary, and you can't get rid of them. Just think about that. If you're concerned about privacy, iOS is not the way to go. Android that you have gotten a custom ROM for or created your own, even better, there you go. But no, there's no love coming from Apple for